Well, good morning, boys and girls. Easter Sunday. It's a happy time. Um, we're shooting this a little earlier, so it's raining out, but I really do believe it's going to be sunny. It's going to be different, but you know, life, life changes. Season is spring. Things are growing. Whether you like it or not, the daffodils and tulips are coming out. You know, the trees are budding. So it's new life, and that's what we're going to talk about today, new life. And it all begins here at church, talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay, so I have a little, a little prayer right here that I found and I liked. And then I'm going to point to you to fold your hands when it's time. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I fold these hands into a prayer to thank the Lord for love and care. Now you fold your hand. Fold your hands right next to me and he will love us both. You'll see. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very simple, and I got it offline, and um, if you can find it. And, um, well, Lent is a very solemn time. The purple is gone. You see a lot of white. That's good, you know? So the first reading today is from the Acts of the Apostles, okay? Peter said to Cornelius in his household, you surely know what happened everywhere in Judea. It all began in Galilee after John, meaning John the Baptist, had told everyone to be baptized. God gave the Holy Spirit and the power to Jesus from Nazareth. He was with Jesus as he went around doing good and healing everyone who was under the power of the devil. We all saw that Jesus did both in Israel and in the city of Jerusalem. Jesus was put to death on a cross, but three days later, God raised him to life and let him to be seen. Not everyone saw him. He was seen only by us, who ate and drank with him after he was raised from the dead. We were the ones God chose to tell others about him. God told us to announce clearly to the people that Jesus is the one he has chosen to judge the living and the dead. Every one of the prophets has said that all who have faith in Jesus will have their sins forgiven in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And it's true. As Christians, we believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Okay. And it was new life on Easter. We also believe the promise he made to his followers, his disciples, that whoever, whoever believes in Christ and lives in friendship with God will be forgiven for their mistakes in life. And even though their bodies will be gone, their spirits will enjoy new life with God. Easter, boys and girls, is the greatest feast of the church's year and is appropriate for the whole community to worship and celebrate together. A little differently, but virtually we can still do it. Environmentally, we can still do it. A suitable um, reading will be provided in a minute. And before we get to the gospel, I want you to look at this word, a word that we haven't been able to say. Alleluia. So what I'm going to do is, when I need for you to say alleluia, I'll just put the card up. Okay? So, let's begin. And your response is, hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord how thankful you are because he is kind and always merciful. Let Israel shout, God is always merciful. Hallelujah. The Lord is powerful with his mighty arm and the Lord wins victories. And so my life is safe, and I will live to tell what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. The stone that the builders tossed aside has now become the most important stone. The Lord has done this, and it is amazing to us. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. So there's a second reading today. And sometimes we have one or we have two before the gospel. And this is a letter 
of Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you have been raised to life with Christ. Now set your heart on what is in heaven. Wait, Christ rules at God's right hand. Think about what is up there, not about what's only on earth. You died, which means that your life is hidden with Christ, who sits beside God. Christ gives meaning to your life, and when he appears, you will also appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. So a couple of things that we're going to talk about today um, after the gospel is about Christ and some of the questions that I'll ask of you. Um, but also, what are symbols? Okay, so you think of the word symbols, we'll be all set. So what I'd like you to do right now is to stand, because I'm going to read the gospel to you, okay? All right. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. So you want to bless your thoughts, new words, and your feelings. Okay. On Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran to Simon Peter and to Jesus' favorite disciple and said, They have taken the Lord from the tomb. We don't know where they had put him. Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. They ran side by side until the other disciple ran faster than Peter and got there first. He bent over and saw the strips of linen cloth lying inside the tomb, but he did not go in. When Simon Peter got there, he went into the tomb and saw the strips of cloth. He also saw the piece of cloth that had been used to cover Jesus' face. It was rolled up and in a place by itself. The disciple who got there first then went into the tomb, and when he saw it, he believed. And at that time, Peter and the other disciple did not know that the scriptures said Jesus would rise to life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, a very short gospel, and it's um, been told for centuries. And um, interesting, when I was doing the gospel um, a couple of weeks ago, kind of like Jesus knew what was going to happen to him, that he would die, cloth would be put around him, the stone would be rolled back. So at the time, they're a little skeptical. The disciples are going, do we believe? Did someone take him? Or did Jesus truly do the, all this himself. Okay. And the one thing about Easter, there's a lot of traditions. This year, um, Passover, the Jewish holiday, is coincides pretty much with Easter. And, um, and there's a lot of symbolism. In the Jewish faith, um, they use different foods to represent different um, meaning in their religion. And here, this is our crucifix, okay? Here we don't have a, um, a cross, really, because a crucifix has a picture or, or an uh, emblem of Jesus on it. And we have light. Um, you see a lot of Easter lilies or tulips, spring flowers, showing life. Jesus came back to life. And so that's why people um, bring those flowers into their homes. The other thing is the egg. Now, this is not a, a real egg, but it'll be good enough. Um, I didn't want to make a mess. And um, you open it up. It's a shell. Doesn't look like much. There's nothing in it. It kind of symbolizes when Jesus died. He was in the tomb. And three days later, he was gone. And what was left behind was everything that was in the tomb with Jesus. Um, so, um, reading off my cards, one of the greatest Easter traditions is to give and receive Easter eggs. Okay. Often these are made from, well, like we all like, chocolate. Okay. And frequently they have surprises inside them. Um, like this one would have a surprise inside. Uh, jelly beans, 
and we'll talk about jelly beans in a moment. Um, also, real eggs that you hard boil them and you color them. And um, that wouldn't be a big priority this type of year during our, um, our pandemic because eggs are a little short. But you can use plastic eggs and you can decorate them. You can put stickers on them. And in some cultures, they uh, put a little hole in the egg before it's bo um, boiled to hard boil and they take out the yolk and so it's basically empty and they make beautiful drawings and designs on the outside um, using wax and color. Beautiful. So why do people give each other eggs at Easter? You wanna know? You wanna know? An egg can look and feel as dead and as lifeless as a stone. It is hard and cold. Okay. It makes no sound, shows no obvious sign of life. And in many ways, it's just like the stone tomb where the lifeless body of Jesus was laid by his followers. Both have cold, hard shells that seem to cover a dark, lifeless space inside them. And yet something amazing happens, which takes us by surprise. New life breaks free from the egg, just as Jesus broke free from death from the tomb. Well, boys and girls magically appeared no uh we took a little break and we have our spring flowers how about that okay and we have some over here also and these flowers uh, will be put on the altar for easter so if you stay tuned for the mass on sunday you will see all these beautiful flowers on the altar it's a type of celebration okay new life new life and you can see some of them here the buds haven't opened yet okay all different types of this is a lily. And over there, tulips, hyacinth, absolutely beautiful. So when you're watching Mass, see if you can pick out which flowers are which. So getting back, how do you think the disciples felt when they found the empty tomb? Oh, me, I'd be stunned, surprised. They were taken by surprise despite everything Jesus had told them about rising again after three days. They had not dared to believe that something so extraordinary and wonderful could happen. And soon their amazement and wonder turned to a great joy in celebration. And um, God needed to show the people that he loved them. And we disappointed God all throughout history. And I'll read a little bit of that in the book. And, um, but he figured, I'm going to send my son, my only son, died to save us and when we're baptized our original sin is taken away so it was a very exciting time do you celebrate do we celebrate Christ's resurrection only at Easter what do you think is it only at Easter no Christ rose to new life and is always with us which is the reason for daily celebration in itself but as Christians, we recall and celebrate his joyous resurrection every Sunday when we gather to relive the surprise and joy of the very first Easter morning. So every time. And also I'm wearing my pen, even though I can't receive communion or wine, it's to remember that I will, in time, everything takes time, we will get back to normalcy and whatever that entails. So right now, I have a little prayer about the jelly bean. And you might have had this in classes in, in the past. And it's about the colors of the jelly bean. Okay. And uh, red is for the blood he gave. Green is for the new life he made. Yellow is for the Son of God come to earth. Orange is for the love beyond all worth. Black is for the sins we made. White is for the grace he gave. Purple is for his hour of sorrow. Pink is for our new tomorrow. An egg full of jelly beans, colorful and sweet, is a prayer, is a promise. It's also an Easter treat. Okay, so that's another one of our symbols. So we have the egg, our flowers, crucifix, and we also have about jelly beans. So the next thing I'm going to do is to read you a story. Okay. Let me put the book down here. Oh. 
And usually I do Easter Sunday every year. And I also read another book. But I figured this one is really good. Um, everyone is reading books on, uh, online. And this says, God Gave Us Easter by Lisa Virgin and Laura Bryant. Okay? And it's about, not the Easter Bunny, but it's about a bear family. Okay? So we're mixing in some fiction and nonfiction, which is fine. Okay? So, and the pages are beautiful inside. Okay? And here we go. I love Easter, little cub said. Me too, Papa Bear said. It's even better than Christmas. Better than Christmas? Why? Because on, East, on Christmas, we celebrate Jesus' birthday. But on Easter, we remember we get to be with him forever. Forever? Oh yes, forever. That's why God gave us Easter. It's the beer family. I like the Easter Bunny cried little cub's little sister. And candy added little cub's little brother. The Easter Bunny is like Santa. Papa Bear said he reminds us of gifts and happy surprises in the morning. But God is the one who gave us Easter. Easter is part of a bigger story he had in mind for a long, long time. How did God give us Easter, Papa? See this egg, Papa Bear said? It's a symbol, helping us remember, just like the shell cracks open and a chick comes out, we remember that Jesus was in a tomb, but he didn't stay dead. He didn't? No, even death couldn't trap God's son. He is life itself, and God loved us so much. He wants us to be with him always. We can see signs of his Easter plan all around us. Little Cub and Papa went on a hike, and they found a big tree that had fallen over in a storm. God told his people that Jesus would come from one family, the root of Jesse, he was called. Jesse and his family had children, and they had children, and they had children. And one of them was Jesus? Yes, little cub, all along, God knew he would give us Easter. Okay. It's sad that this big old tree fell down and died, little cub said. Yes, Papa said. But when it, it, but when it did, it made room for new little trees to grow. See how the sun shines now without those big branches to block it? And there's two little bunnies. And how all the pine cones fell across the floor, forest floor. These pine cones will spread their seeds and baby trees will grow like this one. Out of, the, out of death comes life. And that's how God wants us to see Easter. I still don't like dying. Well, neither do I. We were born to love life. God loves life. But sometimes we have to let go of one thing so we can move on to another. Okay. Moose. Babies. For instance, like, think about this river. Where do rivers go? Well, to the ocean, little cub. Love the ocean. Yes, the river ends, but it spreads into something even bigger. Heaven is like the ocean for us. Because God gave us Easter, we can be part of something bigger. And even though we talk to Jesus now, in heaven we will see Jesus face to face. Couldn't Jesus have just waited for us in heaven? A long time ago, God's children wouldn't listen to him. They didn't even believe in him anymore. It made God very sad and angry. So he sent a huge flood to start anew with Noah and his family. In, that ark with po in the ark were there polar bears and giraffes and monkeys and turtles. And when the flood was done, God promised never to send another one. Whew, little cub said with relief. That's good. Little cub liked water, but she liked land too. It is good. After the flood, God gave us 
a rainbow as a sign of his promise. But when his children, who said they'd follow him, were disobedient again, he had to find a way to keep us connected once and for all. God wants nothing more than to be close to us, his children. So Jesus keeps the promise we broke, little cup. And because of him, God forgives us when we make bad choices. All of us, everyone who believes in him, that's how God gives us Easter. Do you talk to Jesus, Papa? Every day, Papa Bear said, all day. Does he talk back? In a way, it's like he whispers in my heart. In your heart? I thought we listen with our ears. We do. But to hear Jesus, it takes a special kind of listening. Little Cub was silent for the rest of the walk home. She was trying to listen with her heart. She listened and listened and listened. That night as Papa and Mama tucked her into bed, she was still listening. And as her parents kissed her and hugged her, she turned over and remembered she was God's child too. And in that moment, she felt comfy and cozy and cared for almost as if Jesus had whispered, I love you, in her heart. I love you too, Jesus, little cub whispered. Thanks for giving us Easter. The next morning, little cub said, Papa, I think I heard God last night. You did, he said, putting his arms around her. Well, that's the best Easter present ever. What did he say? I love you. Mama, those are good words. Mmm, those are good words. Perfect words. And they really are what Easter is all about. The end. Okay? Very sweet, but to the point. And God does love us. And the nice thing about God he is all forgiving. Okay. So before we go, I just want to do the intercession prayer, so, which would end our regular um, meeting time. Okay. As brothers and sisters in one loving family, together let us pray to our Heavenly Father. And when I point to you, I want you to say, hear our prayer. Okay. For the church and all her people, as together we celebrate the joy of this Easter morning, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace in our world and our lives as we forgive one another's mistakes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For people who have lost hope and faith as we share the good news with the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have died as they enjoy everlasting life with the risen Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Knowing that our Heavenly Father is listening in the silence of our hearts, let us share our own unspoken prayers with Him. And close your eyes and think some nice thoughts. Okay. Loving Father, let the joy of Easter and the life we share help us to believe in You and follow Your faithfulness. Amen. Thank you for watching, boys and girls. Have a great Easter. Stay safe. Let's do this together. Bye-bye.